All right, we're back. Uh, I'm gonna try three from a fresh start. And I just realized that I had a typo in here. I really had meant to make this equation 2x minus 3y is equal to 12. So just go ahead and make that adjustment on your notes. No harm, no foul, okay? So I was getting y by itself over here. So we subtract 2x instead of the 3x. And then divide by negative 3. All right, so what that gives us is it gives us the original equation's slope of 2 thirds. We know that this, perpen this line perpendicular to it has to go through 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. This tells us that if the slope of the original line is 2 thirds, if m equals 2 thirds, then m that's perpendicular to it, and we're just going to use that notation, is the flip of it, and you make it negative. So that means you would go down 1, 2, 3, right 2, or up 1, 2, 3, left 2, up 1, 2, 3, left 2. And you'd keep going if you could put some more on there. You graph your line. And here's, you know what, here's a good way of just to kind of check yourself. Let's graph the original line and see if it even looks like it intersects at a right angle. So here's the line that's perpendicular to it. Here's the 2 thirds x minus 4. Go down 1, 2, 3, 4, plot your point. Go up 2, right 1, 2, 3, up 2, right 1, 2, 3. And as we, we check that, you know, I, I freehanded that, so maybe we should use a ruler, especially if we're trying to see if it intersects at right angles. I, it looks pretty darn close to a right angle to me. So normally if you make a mistake, it'll be way off. It won't even look like it's close to 90 degrees. All right, so on the same plane, create the line. We did that. We checked it. And then write the equation of the line perpendicular to what you... Oh, okay. Write the equation of the perpendicular line that was originally graphed. So not this one, but that one. Well, we know its slope is negative 3 halves, and we know that y equals mx plus b is the way to do it. So y equals negative 3 halves x, and its starting point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units above the origin, so plus 5. All right, try what on our own? Oh, I gave you guys some just interesting looking ones. If you've got this equation, let me get some more room for this. Well, maybe I don't have it. 1.4y equals 2.1x minus 7. If you remember, to get rid of decimals in an equation, uh, it's pretty easy to just multiply everything times 10. Which gives us 14y equals 21x minus 70. And we're, we're basically, we're almost there. We just got to divide by 14. So 21 over 14, uh, they both divide 7. So it reduces down to 3 divided by 2. And then 70 divided by 14, uh, I believe 7 goes into both of those. So if you take 70 divided by 7, you get 10. You take 14 divided by 7 and you get 2. Oh, it's 5. Fourteen, twenty-eight, forty-two, fifty-six, seventy. 28, 42, 56, Graph the line parallel to it that passes through 2, negative 3. All right. Well, that'd be 1, 2, down 3. It's parallel to it, which means if m is 3 halves, 
m parallel would equal 3 halves as well. So you'd go up 1, 2, 3, right 2. Up 1, 2, 3, right 2. Down 1, 2, 3, left 2. Ugh. Sorry, I don't use the ruler because it takes too much video time. Second one, graph the line perpendicular to it that, pra that passes through 1, 5. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now you're flipping the slope and making it negative, negative reciprocal. So 2 thirds, negative. So down 1, 2, right 1, 2, 3. Down 1, 2, right 1, 2, 3. Up 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. And that's interesting because this line that's perpendicular to the original is also perpendicular to the parallel line. See? Looks like those meet at 90 degrees as well. All right, I threw in a special case here. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys remember something that looks like that. This is a horizontal line. In fact, I will graph the original as like a dotted line to give us some perspective. Here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. There's y equals 3. So what would it look like to have a line that's perpendicular to it that passes through 7, 2? Because really, our, our whole idea of the slope tells me how to rewrite the equation, it, it kind of fails here. But I think you guys see what it's supposed to be. To create a 90 degree angle, with a horizontal line, you need a vertical line. So there is our line that is perpendicular to the original that passes through 7, 2. How about the line that's parallel to it that passes through negative 1, 6? So here's negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's got to be parallel to the dashed line. So what kind of line would be parallel to a horizontal line? It'd be another horizontal line. So it'd be a horizontal line that looks like that. So the special cases are actually way easier than the other ones. Very little work is required. All right, check, check. Uh, write the equations of the perpendicular and parallel lines you just graphed. Yeah, so... Uh, what's the equation for this? It's a vertical line at 7 units right of the origin, so that would just be x equals 7. Remember, we had special cases for writing the equations of lines that were special case. Right? We had equations for special cases that don't look like y equals mx plus b. This one will kind of have the same uh, structure as this. It's going to be y equals a number but it's going to be y equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. Yeah. So those are the, right, the equations of the perpendicular line and the parallel lines that you just graphed. Easy peasy. What more do I have for you guys? This is what more I have for you. What if you are only given two equations and you are asked, are they parallel, are they perpendicular, or are they neither? Well, hopefully you picked up from uh, when I was just kind of giving you random examples that if y is by itself, I have the ability to check the slopes. I have the ability to check the number in front of x for both equations. So that's the best way to approach it. Get y by itself. Compare the m's. So for part A, you know what? I'm going to get rid of Well, I don't think I can get rid of it. It's a PDF. Never mind. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
3y minus 8x equals 16. And 16x minus 6y equals 12. You know, if you're watching this and you didn't see it in class, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. Okay, you've unpaused it. Move the x's. Divide by 3. y equals 8 thirds x plus... Uh, you know, the 16 thirds, it doesn't really matter what that is. I'm not even going to... Not even going to take the time to turn it into a mixed number. We'll just leave it as that. Over here, move the x. Negative 6y equals negative 16x plus 12. Divide both sides by negative 6. Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 16 over 6, uh, that, if I divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, I get 8 thirds. So it's a positive 8 thirds, I don't need to put the plus to indicate it's positive, x minus 2. What do you guys think? Parallel it is. So these two are parallel lines. Let's check letter B. So x equals 21 plus 3y. Give myself some room here. And 2y plus 6x equals 10. Again, try to get, a, get y by itself on your own. Let's see how you did. I'm first going to rearrange this to 21 plus 3y equals 1x. All right, I'm going to put it in a much better format for me to work with. So I'm going to subtract that 21 and divide by 3. All right. Got it. Second equation. So what do you think? If I put the negative 3 over 1, looks like I flipped 1 third and then made it negative. They're negative reciprocals. Perpendicular lines. All right, and then our last one, we kind of have a freebie. Y is already by itself for part C. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm going to erase some of this. If you need to go back and look at A and B, pause the video and go back. I am going to rearrange this to, uh, to call it y equals negative 1x plus 3. All right, down here, 4x minus 4y equals 28. still showing up? It is. Positive 1x minus 7. Now hopefully you guys remember earlier in the video, or maybe it was the last video I did, part 1. These two don't look like negative flips of one another, but they are. This is negative 1 over 1. This is 1 over 1. Flip 1 over 1. You get 1 over 1. Make it negative. It's that. So they actually are perpendicular lines. <clears throat> All right. I hope this video, these two videos were super helpful for helping you guys understand the basics for how the linear equations and the graphs and the slopes help piece together how lines can be perpendicular or parallel and sometimes they're neither and you just have to look at the slopes to decide all right guys good luck on the homework thanks for watching